hello how are you to, uh, investors today i'm going to do the uh, the stock valuation for the salesforce this is the uh, the ticker name is crm and myself is pramod kumar i am a cfa charter holder and frm certified in my uh, channel i does the stock valuation using the intrinsic value uh, using the couple of uh, models so basically the agenda for today is as usual i'll go over the enterprise model the free cash flow model and check the liquidity ratios uh, income statements and top level returns to see if the stocks is uh, good for the long term uh, perspective or not at the moment i didn't prepare the spreadsheet uh, i think this is quite a quick uh, review of the stocks so let's let's get started okay so if uh, salesforce is basically if i go to the top level returns basically i'll uh, have taken the last past tense year of the data the company the data uh, from 2011 this is from the first year uh, january 31st to 2020 uh, uh, and i have two returns here the return on equity and return on investment capital which is very important if you can see this this is a top level return the from the day one the company's the top level returns is dropped very significantly in uh, in 2013 and from 2013 onwards the company does a good job and it's increase its return but again from 2017 uh, it's dropped again so very clearly we can see it's very close to 0 0% return and even the return on investment capital which is i am all pretty much looking is even negative it's returns below so this mean the company is does very very poorly uh in the last in the recent year let's see uh how, more deeper into the margins and how the company uh, financials tell about the company so if i go from the income statements this thing quite surprising me honestly that these are the top 3 uh the the margin i have the gross profit margin uh ebit margin which is the operating margin in before interest and tax and uh the net profit margin look at the gross profit margin right is huge if you can say is oh, almost from 80% to 75% now right is the blue line but i'm very surprised even the operating margin because is why this is are not positive right most of the cases is only 1.4 in the last and the net profit margin was only 0.74 not even a 1% so this mean company has a lot of huge overhead and cost and unable to convert this revenue into the bottom line and this is not we are looking for just one year or two year right uh, so I, I, you, i in my channel i whenever i invest from the long term perspective i go for the 10 years uh, i so you can see the trend is 10 year data because it will easily remove the uh, the noise uh, from the cyclic perspective and uh, any other right so it's this but you can see clearly this is like a very 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 bad in terms of the income statement okay so let's go to the liquidity liquidity basically it's tell how much cash flow of uh, the uh, the two ratios where i'm looking the current ratio and the cash ratio and again just to point out here if you don't know what's the cash ratio and current ratio i do have uh, the videos on my channel even for the gross margin and uh, other net profit margin i do have a video uh, on the basics of investment so you can feel free to check it out okay so think from this perspective this is to check the short term liquidity of the company if anything above 100% or 1 uh, is is good right so the current ratio okay it's closer to 1 in the re recent year and now it's a little bit over 1 or 107% but the the pure conservative cash ratio is is just 50% if tomorrow the company uh has a credit crunch so i believe they have a the problem but they really have to sell off their current assets right uh, here so let's go to from the model perspective okay because of their net profit is way Uh, bad and uh, so i'm not using the net profit model because it's giving me honestly the zero value of the company or very 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 low value right so i'm going to focus on the enterprise value model and the free cash flow model and from that perspective i'm trying to find out what's really the value of the company okay so from uh, the enterprise value so this is the 10 year of data let me bring it to the screen oops sorry i have to hide myself 
hopefully i didn't cut other important ratio okay yeah now it's good okay uh okay so on the enterprise value model and uh, i i request if uh, you, you guys have not liked the video please uh, like the video it motivates me to make these kind of video and also if you're new kindly subscribe to the channel and do feel free to check it out uh, the other uh, stock valuation i'll put the end of the video i put a link there okay so here okay is from the this is the, again the 10 year of the data this is oops i forget to take it out okay now you see right 2011 uh, pretty much and to 2000 of uh, 20 almost 10 years so here i have the what i'm doing in this model i have to calculate the market cap so this is the price of the stocks at this point uh, it was 16 dollar but now the price is at the first of 31st is generally is uh, as per the 10k is and uh, at that time i got the price from the market is 182 so from the price perspective the company does a very good job right if you see it's uh, gone gone many folds right so that's pretty good but it, as you can see another things and i'll show you as well this share outstanding seems like the company is diluting its liquidity it was 531 but the instant of and company keep issuing the shares consistently in the market so which is not great as well so it was only 531 million and now it's eight, uh, on 31st of january is 893 million so which is pretty bad right okay so to come up with the market cap is pretty straightforward just multiply these two together i have you can see here right to come up with the market cap to come and now to come up with the enterprise value i need two more components so i have taken the total debt from their uh, balance sheets this is whatever debt i can able to get it so you sum together so that if we can and then this is the total cash sim similar concept so if we can take the market cap at debt plus minus cash i got the enterprise value which is here so the good thing about here is okay i'm showing here the 10 year the kagger the year over year growth rate from the enterprise value which is 33 or almost 34 percent which is very very good honestly uh, how the company is doing right in terms of increase the and ebitda which is the uh, operating income before earnings sorry earning before interest tax and depreciations it's also increased almost almost we can say 29 or 28 percent right little over 28 percent so which is year over which is very also very good so that so that's why so it, but if i uh but the ebitda is not although it's grown by the that many percentage but it's still not very good if i see the ratio right the enterprise over ebitda this means if you today as an investor if i have a, uh let's say if you have 158 uh the billion dollars and you go and buy the company it will take you almost 50 47 or 48 years to uh for this company to to generate that much of an income right to give your money back so which is a very bad so I, I don't like this kind of a very high EBITDA. So don't think uh, if anything is high is good. Sometimes the higher is not good. Depend upon which part is right. And also on the debt side, you can see, okay, from the debt perspective, looks like the company is doing a pretty good job. Uh, from the, it was 1.82 and now it's reduced to only one. So the company is almost generating that much income as what it has its debt. So that's pretty good okay to compute this i have projected the 10 years of ebitda i have taken the 10 years and then taken the the growth rate of uh, uh, 27.36 which is a little bit conservative i have taken rather than taking the 10 year i take the recent five year growth rate because this is lower and then i expect the long term after 10 years the company will grow at the rate of 2 percent percent right and significantly i am reducing the growth rate from 27 to to two percent right so and for the terminal value basically and then i'll think i assume this to sell off the company at uh, 33 times of this ebitda which is even if you notice is very way low as its average uh, ev over ebitda right 49 so so that's what i have taken the current ebitda is lower than uh, ev or in the uh, ebitda multiple is lower than its average but better but this is quite high right so better to be conservative so so that's why i have taken this 
okay so uh, and that and the required return if you no notice on my all other video as well i consistently use the 10 percent rate return because that's i expect uh, stocks to be uh, providing me that kind of a return as well so discount that this uh, uh, projected ebitda by the 10 percent return i got this pv sum it all together adjust by the debt and cash i got my enterprise value divide by number of sh share million outstanding and if i adjust that my my got my first price of 241 dollars and 28 cents let's see the second multiple models and uh, i also show want to show you something on uh, this uh, data here before i'll show the final price or maybe i'll show the after the final price so on the free cash flow models again the same concept i take the 10 years of uh, cash flows uh this is the capital expenditure how much companies investing and then yeah, when you adjust this together pretty much is sum it you get the free cash flows it's pretty simple method take the 10-year data free cash flow yield if you can see is pretty uh low is only two percent right but year over year free cash flow is very good uh it's 25 26 uh, almost 26 percent right so that's pretty good so again i have projected a 10 year of free cash flow reduce the free cash flow very conservatively to two percent and then sell the company as 15 times which is pretty normal for these uh, good companies to decide it this is most like a pabrai manish pabrai model i'm i'm using uh, i just a little bit change this model but pretty much is that model okay and then discount by the present value you all might already see the, uh, the this value uh, this interesting uh, value of 131 dollars okay okay so what is my final price so my final price is i since i'm using two models i give equal weight this is my weighted price so 50 percent of 241 is 120 50 percent of 131 is 65 and if i do that my price is 186 at at today's in this tie right now the market price is 271 i think which is way way over and the company should come back to its normal so maybe something is uh, not not correct and also i like to tell you here if you can see this i also like to see not only the company uh, i have highlighted earlier that companies keep uh, issuing the shares but if i see the net ratio of the company purchase and issue if we net it out the company over the period of time it's issuing more and more shares which is not good right i was saying this to i need to be see this down and also if this is on this as i already have shown to you right with the uh, the ebitda and the net profit margin here which is clearly shown here as well which is 12 and then this is less very less percent okay so that's it about this so what do you think about this uh, video let me know and as a promote kumar cfa charter holder and frm certified uh, I, I i don't want to comment on this talks but uh, let's say this is the price in front of you what you think do you think still it's a good uh, opportunity or do you think you will pass this stock from the long-term investment perspective please kindly put in the comments and let me know if you want me to cover any of your other favorite stocks and i will put in my list as well okay thank you for watching and see you soon in the next video bye for now